Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 10th, 2022 edition of the Sands Internet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm again recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Top of the news today, no surprise, Microsoft's patch Tuesday. We got patches for a total of 141 vulnerabilities, which does include the Chromium patches for Microsoft Edge, which were released earlier. 17 of these vulnerabilities are critical and two have already been disclosed. Now, there's also one vulnerability, CVE 2022-34713, that has already been exploited. This vulnerability is actually affecting sort of a good old friend. It's a patch for a path traversal vulnerability in Microsoft Windows Support Diagnostic Tool or MSDT, which has caused a lot of problems, of course, over the last uh, two years or so. And this new variant of the patch traversal issue has been in some form around for uh, two years, has been sort of rediscovered uh, back in June, and also now has a nice kind of name, the dog walk vulnerability. This vulnerability, as well as a second MSDT vulnerability, are both rated as important, not critical. Exploitation would require some user interaction, which causes the lower rating. But for Microsoft Exchange Server, we do have three vulnerabilities that are privileged escalation vulnerabilities, but still rated critical. They're affecting Exchange Server 2013, 16, and 19, but to mitigate these issues, just applying the patch is not sufficient. In addition, you need to enable Windows Extended Protection on your Exchange server. Microsoft released a blog post about it uh, with a detail. Extended protection is mainly meant to prevent machine in the middle attacks. Microsoft made a script available to make it easier to enable extended protection on your servers. But as the blog warns, please read up first and make sure nothing breaks as you enable it. There is a GitHub repo for the little script they came up with and encourage you to leave comments there if you have any problems. Another vulnerability to watch is CVE 2022-35804. I haven't found a lot of details about it yet, but the vulnerability exposes SMB clients and servers to remote code execution. This, of course, always have a big flag. This is a vulnerability in SMB version 3 compression. And I vaguely remember we did have some vulnerabilities in this specific feature uh, before. So you may want to consider turning off this feature. And actually, that's one of the possible mitigations for this vulnerability. So plenty to patch and uh, no reason really to hold back a patch quickly this month. And imagine we have yet another processor vulnerability affecting Intel and AMD processor. But this time it's actually not a side channel attack, but instead a flaw in the processor's architecture, which of course makes it a little bit more tricky to fix too. As typical for these flaws, we got a name identifying it. It's the APIC leak. It uh, does affect current versions of Intel's and AMD's processors. The name is derived from the APIC registers or Advanced Programmable Interrupt Controllers. That's what APIC sort of stands for that are being abused here to read data from the CPU cache across access control barriers. Now, you do need to be an administrator, you need to have already elevated privileges uh, to exploit this, which of course makes it sound like it's less of an issue like some of these other uh, side channel attacks and such that uh, more of a use kind of a privilege escalation. But the particular concern here is that it does provide access to the SGX, to the secure enclave. And that of course specifically was introduced to sort of prevent a malicious administrator, an attacker uh, from uh, compromising the system uh, further. And it wouldn't be a complete patch Tuesday without some patches from Adobe. This month, Adobe is covering Adobe Commerce, Acrobat, Reader, Illustrator, FrameMaker, and Premiere Elements. 
Aside from the Acrobat and Reader uh, issues, which of course are always interesting because these products are used so widely, Adobe Commerce uh, deserves some attention. That's actually what used to be Magento. And there are a couple of interesting flaws here that allow arbitrary code execution either via XPath injection or cross-site scripting. So uh, don't hold back on patching this. Uh, this always has been sort of a big target uh, for the sites uh, running it. Well, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.